Blockchain has some fundamental privacy problems by virtue of its design. Specifically, the distributed aspect of a blockchain means that each full node that processes transactions and builds the blockchain necessary has access to the blockchain transaction data itself. In a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, this means that the blockchain is publicly available and every transaction can be traced back to the first genesis block. Bitcoin is said to be pseudonymous, which means that it has data points which are not directly associated with a specific individual, but where multiple appearances of a person can be linked together. The public nature of the blockchain allows opportunities for identification. Take that into consideration. A blockchain like Bitcoin provides very little privacy protection. Aside from the public scrutiny, individuals that rely on intermediaries such as an exchange like Coinbase are subject to having their identities exposed by the exchange. Such as when the IRS, if you're in the United States, or even the HMRC, if you're based in the UK, demanded Coinbase turn over certain records involving cryptocurrency transactions. Privacy is often the focus when weaknesses of blockchain are discussed. What if there was a way to be able to provide end-to-end -end anonymity across chain for the entire DeFi stack. Stay tuned to find out more. My name is Firoz from decentralizedchain.com. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about crypto, whether it's news, insights, or analysis to help you get that edge, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you do not miss a thing. In today's episode, we are going to cover another project that is creating some waves in the Polkadot community. It's called Raise Network. It's a substrate-based cross-chain privacy protocol for the Polkadot ecosystem. The idea is to provide end-to-end -end anonymity for the entire DeFi stack. Simply put, it enables privacy cross-chain for payment and trading whilst keeping assets and behaviors away from prying eyes. Without getting too technical, the protocol allows you to mint one-to-one -one anonymized tokens from the base token, be it Ethereum, whether it's DOT, whether it's BTC or any ERC20 token once the cross bridge is up and running. You then have a transfer module which enables the anonymous transfer and finally you have the redeem module where it converts your anonymized token back into its native form. One of the key items to bear in mind is its use of ZK Snarks which is the key to maintaining the anonymity the possibilities of ZK Snarks are impressive. You can verify the correctness of computations without having to execute them, and you will not even learn what was executed, just that it was done correctly, as if by magic. The reality is that ZK Snarks can be reduced to four simple techniques, and there is a great Ethereum blog post I'll pin in the description below that explains it for anyone wanting to know more. The token itself plays a key role in the Raise Network ecosystem. First of all, it's used as the privacy token. There will also be used as a governance token, which is cool because when you have a governance token in place, it allows you to ultimately have a say in the direction of the ecosystem. It's also going to be used for liquidity rewards, a popular way to attract users to incentivize them in order to participate and be part of the actual network itself. And also it's going to be used as an intermediary for exchange of services within the network as well as more services come to fruition. One of the other cool parts that I really like about it is obviously the token burn functionality. And the idea behind that is as it processes transactions and obviously you get fees from that, a certain percentage of that fee is also burnt away. And what that actually does to a token is fundamentally reduce the supply and increase the scarcity, which generally has a positive impact on price performance. Looking at the team and given the nature of the project being anonymity, this is always a tough one to deduce. From what we can see available so far, we have skills ranging from marketing to coding and blockchain development, as well as familiarity with ZK Snarks. Once again, you need to do your own research here to understand the driving force behind the project. Talking about driving force, the roadmap appears to be that the core and ZK Snarks implementation release is due within the next four to five weeks. And it also looks like the token sale is targeted for some point in Q2 with the liquidity, with the liquidity reward program to attract users to the ecosystem. And we've got the protocol and the product to be launched in Q3. We don't know much about the token price yet. However, looking at the tokenomics, there will be 120 million raised tokens with just over one 
fifth of the supply for sale. Seems to be a reasonable vesting schedule with seed only getting 10% on TGE and private with 20%. Team tokens are locked for nine months and then released slowly over a 12 month period. I like seeing this as it supports the narrative of teams not dumping on release. Likewise, advisor tokens are also locked for three months and vested over nine months. My final thoughts on this, given the team is anonymous, which in crypto there are teams that are anonymous, however are known for being involved in some successful projects. CyberFi is a prime example, and there are those that have rug pulled, so beware. However, saying this, I believe this project certainly has all the ingredients to perform well. I mean, the formula is Polkadot, and we have seen some great successful launches to date. We also have DeFi with its surge since last March 2020, and it's not going anywhere with total value locked growing every day. And then lastly, you have privacy, which should always be a default when it comes to blockchain and cryptocurrency. The tokenomics clearly have been thought through, and you only need to look at some of the past successful projects. We have seen similar launch with similar economics and vesting. Just doing some rough maths with what is being released for seed, private, public, Public and liquidity, that would mean we have just over 12% of the supply in circulation at TGE. And it could be less than that, as I wouldn't expect the operational reserve to be sold immediately. So there is certainly room for some serious price appreciation. It's certainly a project to watch and feels very early, given no information yet available around token sales. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the overview. And if you did, please don't forget to drop a like, consider subscribing and hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of my upcoming gems to add to your watch list. Let me know what you think about the project in the comments below and I'll see you on the next one.